Hello friends, this video on mathematical reasoning part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 11. Here we have to find necessary and sufficient condition. Here the question is if you drive over 80 km per hour, you get fine. So this is a condition. To drive 80 km per hour, you get fine. Why have written this? Because this is if and then condition. There are other conditions also which can impose a fine on you. For example, if you drive without license, you get fine. If you drive in a drunk condition, you get fine. If you break signal, you get fine. Correct? So this is P and this is Q. Now we have to find necessary and sufficient condition. So driving over 80 km is a necessary or sufficient condition. You are right. It is a sufficient condition to get fine because there are other conditions also which can give you a fine. Correct. So these are all sufficient conditions. So whatever is there in the blue are all sufficient condition. These are all sufficient condition, not necessary condition. If you drive over 80 km or if if you drunk and drive, if you break signal, if you drive without license, any of this condition is met, you will have to give the fine. But fine is imposed. That is a sufficient condition. If you say if fine, right? The same condition we can write in this form. If fine not imposed, because if it is P is to Q. I can write the contrapositive as not of Q implies not of P. So I will say if fine not imposed, right? If my if fine not imposed implies drive lesser than 80. That is not of Q. So if you see fine not imposed, then drive less than. 80. Driving is less than 80. Here if you see this is a sufficient condition. In fact, necessary condition. Why? Because if you are saying that fine is not imposed, then I can very much say sure with 100 percent guarantee I can say that this guy was not driving above 80. Correct? Because the fine is not imposed, that is a sufficient condition, that is a necessary condition actually. That's a necessary condition. Because with that only you can say that. The driver was not driving above 80 km. But when you are saying that if this guy is driving over 80 km, if I'm saying if drive if he is not driving above 80, then I'm very I can't be very much sure that fine was imposed on because fine can be imposed using other condition also. Correct. So if you see in this scenario, generally if, if P is to Q, in such case. Q is always a necessary condition and P is always sufficient condition because there are so many P's which makes a Q. If you drive over 80, if you drive without license, if you drunk and drive, you break signal, these are all P's which makes Q and the Q is fine is imposed. That's wrong. We'll take some example of negation. Write the negation of the following statements. For every positive real number x, x minus 1 is also positive. So when you want to write the negation of this statement, we have to say that there exist there exist a real number x for which x minus 1 is not positive. So for when you say for every, so for every negation is there exist. For every positive real number x minus 1 is positive, so we say there exists a positive real number x for which x minus 1 is not positive. Similarly, all cats crash. So when you say all cats crash, the so negative will be there exists a cat which doesn't scratch. That doesn't scratch. Correct? This is the negative of the statement. Similarly, when you say for every real number x, either x is greater than 1 or x is less than 1, then for this I will say there exists a real number for which x is greater than 1 or x is less than 1 is false. Similarly, for example, the statement there exists a number such that x is always greater than 0 and less than 1, then I will say for all number, for all number x, x is this condition is satisfying. That is, 
for all number x, x is always greater than zero or x is sorry, x is less than zero and greater than one. What we have done? Then you see there exists, and if I want to find the negation, I'll say for all, right? For all number x. Now the condition was x is greater than zero, less than one. So invert this. So when you invert this, this condition becomes x is less than zero and x is greater than one. Correct? Because the condition here was x is between zero and one. Now to invert this, the condition will be this value of x and this value. Of x. That is, x is less than zero and x is greater than one. And instead of there exists, it becomes all. So for all becomes there exist and there exist become for all there exists become for all in case of negation and the statement whatever is there you write the negation of the statement that is how you create negation of the complete statement we'll take an example of converse and so if the numbers of this form p to q the converse will be Q to P, correct? And the contra positive will be not of Q implies not of P. So the here if the number is in a positive integer is prime only if it has no divisors other than one and itself. So in this statement, if you see this is P if and this is Q. Correct? So the question says if a number has divisor other than one and itself, then the number is prime. To find the converse, we'll say q is to p. That means we will say if the positive number is prime, then the number has divisors other than one and itself. To find the contra positive, we'll say not of q implies not of p. That is, if the number positive number is not prime, then the positive number is the not divisible of 1 and itself. Similarly, I go to beach whenever it is sunny, that means if it is sunny, it is P, I go to beach, that is Q. So here also, to find converse, I will say, if I go to beach, it is sunny. To find contra positive, I will say, if I will not go to beach, it is not sunny. One more example, if it is hot house outside, then you will feel thirsty, this is P. This is Q. To find converse, we'll say if you feel thirsty, it is hot outside. To find contra positive, we'll say if you don't feel thirsty, it is not hot outside. Correct? Very simple. You just you have to just find P and Q, and then you have to use the formula for converse. It is Q is to P, and for contra positive, not of Q implies not of. Now we'll take some example of contra positive, converse, and inverse. Let's suppose this is our statement. If n is multiple of 50, then n is multiple of 5. The same thing I have represented here. If n is multiple of 50, n is multiple of 5. Why I have given so many conditions here? Because this is our form if then. And we know that these are all just a selection. And this is a mandatory condition, right? So if this is the statement, we have to find contra positive. So if P is to Q is of the form of statement. To find contra positive, what we do? First, we revert this. So we topple it. So it becomes Q is to P. And since it is contra positive, and contra positive statements are both same, so we'll say complement of Q, complement of P. So this is the contra positive statement for P is to Q. Here, this is P and this is Q. So if you see here again, this is P and this is Q. So if I want to write not of Q, implies not of p that means if you say that if n is not multiple of 5 this implies n is not multiple of 50 this is the contra positive statement that is if n or you can say if n is not multiple of 5 then n is not multiple of 50. 
So this is our contra positive statement. If you see contra positive statement and statement both are same actually. If n is not multiple of 5 that means n is not multiple of 50 that is for sure. Correct. So here also if you see n is not multiple n is multiple of 5. If n is multiple of 50 then n is multiple of 5. That is the statement. Contra positive is if n is not multiple of 5 then n is not multiple of 50. Very simple what we have done. Statement was of the form P if P then Q then the contra positive is if not of Q then not of P. Correct. Also if we can we can see that if statement is true contra positive is true. If statement is false contra positive is false. For example if we take let's suppose n is equal to we take as 100. n is equal to 100 in that case P is true because n is multiple of 50. This is true. If true n is multiple of 5 this is also true. If you take the contra positive, n is not multiple of 5. You take a uh, number, let's suppose 7. 7 is not a multiple of 5. Then we see that 7 is also not multiple of 50. Correct? What we have done? To find the contra positive, just if the statement is in this form, if p then q, the contra positive is if not q, then not p. Similarly, for converse, we just topple it. So for the statement p is to q, the converse will be q implies p so the so the converse statement will be something like that if if n is multiple of 5 this is the q first then n is multiple of 50 this will be the converse to find the inverse what we'll do we'll just write complement complement here that is for p is to q the inverse is p complement implies q complement so the inverse will be if n is to 50 that is complement not if n is not divisible by 50 implies n is not divisible by 5. I'm not writing the statement I'm just writing the meaning of this if n is not multiple of 50 implies n is not multiple of 5. So this is the inverse of the statement. So what we have seen here I mean we have just used the uh, formula which we have learned if p is to q is a statement then not of q implies not of p this is contra positive right this is c positive contra positive inverse is q is to p that is inverse inverse and converse is in converse we just change the direction sorry this is converse we change the direction this is converse 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 in case of inverse we just add a complement here that is complement of p implies complement of q if you just know this formula, you can find out all these values. If p implies q, this is the statement. Then for contra positive, you first couple it, it becomes q to p and then add complement because this and this are same actually. Statement and contra positive are same. In case of converse, if you want to find converse of the statement, you just topple it. So p is to q becomes q is to p. To find the inverse, you just add negative negative statement to itself. It becomes negative of p implies negative of q. We'll take one more example. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.